Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. So it is that time for my monthly makeup kit video. If you're new to my channel or just not familiar with this series, basically I'm doing a roundup of all the products that I've been testing out for the month, which will be the month of August. And I just give you updated thoughts. Quite a few of these products, I have done dedicated reviews, so I will definitely link all of those videos down below. This is where I keep all of my just makeup that I'm wearing, whether it's my just holy grail products that I'm using consistently that I just love. And then also I like to put new makeup in here to test out to make sure that I'm actively testing it out. So from here on out in all my future monthly makeup kit videos, including today, I'm only going to be talking about new stuff. I'm not going to be talking about just my favorites because... That's why I do a favorites video and I just feel like it's a little redundant. Plus this video would be a million years long. Without further ado, make sure you grab your makeup if you wanna do your makeup with me. I'm gonna be applying the majority of the products today as much as I can at least um, to my face and we're just gonna be sitting and chilling and chatting. And um, so you can grab your makeup and get ready with me. If not, sit back, relax, grab a drink, grab a snack. I'm just working on my water for the day and let's go ahead and get into it. I actually have a ton of skincare that I've been testing out over the month of August, so I'm going to briefly go over that. Um, and then I have some hair products as well. So for skincare, I actually really like dove into good molecules. Y'all know I love Pyeong Kong Yule. That's my favorite skincare brand of all time. I do have a full skincare video. Um, I will link that down below. I'll also link it up here if you're curious. But I really wanted to try more of Good Molecules. I've thoroughly enjoyed a lot of their products. I love how accessible they are. I can actually get them at my local Target in the store. So I'm, if I'm ever just out running errands, I can just pop in and grab what I need. With Pyeong Kong Yule, I do have to wait. Um, it is coming from overseas and it's just not as readily available. I still love it, still, still love it. So I purchased quite a few things myself. One of these was sent to me, um, but the majority of this is all purchased myself. So you already know that I love the silicone free priming moisturizer. That's honestly what prompted me to want to try more. I also picked up the Hyaluronic Acid Serum, which I think I've actually tried this before in the past. Um, love this. I also picked up the Overnight Exfoliating Treatment. This is the most recent to me, so I haven't been trying this out for too long, but I use this every single night. It's got AHAs, BHAs, just a great kind of overnight chemical exfoliant, and I've really been enjoying this. So I would definitely repurchase this. I really, really like this one. And that brings me to this, which is their glycolic exfoliating toner. This is actually a product that they sent to me. Um, and while I like this, I like the exfoliating treatment more. They're both, they both have glycolic acids. So there's no reason to have both. So as soon as I finish this, I'm going to, I'm not going to repurchase this. But it's not that it's a bad product. I just don't need both products. Um, I also purchased their vitamin C booster powder. I thought this would be a great way to incorporate vitamin C. That was easy. I could just add it to my moisturizer. And I have heard that having an L-sorbic acid powder like this is a lot better because vitamin C is so unstable. So having it in a powder form helps with the stability aspect of it, but I just don't like this. It feels very gritty on the skin. And yeah, it's just not my favorite. It's not terrible, but yeah, I can definitely feel the grittiness on my skin. I've also been trying out their instant cleansing balm. I, oh my gosh, I just hit myself in the face. Really love this. I, I already repurchased this. And then last product, this was also sent to me by the brand. I've actually had this for quite a while. This is the Yerba Mate. I don't know how you pronounce that. It's their wake up eye gel. I'm not a huge fan of this. I personally prefer a thick, rich cream kind of eye eye cream. And this is very thin, very gel-like, and it stays very sticky on the skin. It's just not hydrating enough for me. So yeah, um, I would not purchase this myself. I love how on the box of every product, it tells you exactly the percentage of every ingredient so you know exactly what you're getting. I love their transparency and I just love how affordable and easily accessible they are. All right, so a hair product. 
um, that I've actually really been liking. Um, I just picked this up on a whim off of Amazon. I wanted something to help with my sleek buns. I work out really early in the morning. I usually work out, work out around five in the morning, but I am still working throughout the day, filming, things like that. So I need to be able to put my hair up even though it's disgusting. And I wanted a gel that would just make that easy. And this gel in particular, um, sorry, I didn't say the name. This is the Cantu Shea Butter Extra Hold Edge Stay Gel for perfect, sleek, smooth styles and ponytails. I was like, oh, that's perfect. I love sleek styles. So I've been using this in my hair. I've actually been using it with this brush. I got this separately. I found this at Target, um, but this is the Kiss. Oh, I cannot remember the name. I think it's called the Edge Styler, but it's got um, a comb on one side, a bristle brush on the other, and then on this side, it actually has like a spatula and then another comb. And another reason I wanted a product like this rather than like a squeezy gel or a gel that was really thin was I could take my brush and actually put it in the product and then apply it straight to my hair. So I also use this Annie military brush. Sometimes I'll just dip my brush in there and do it like that. So I just wanted something really easy. This is not the strongest hold. The got to be glued hair gel is by far the strongest hold hair gel that I've ever tried. Um, but it's nice just for an everyday, like staying at home, putting my hair back in a sleek bun. It's very gentle on my hair, which I like as well. It does not get crispy. Um, it does leave the hair looking a little bit shiny. It does give that kind of shiny, sleek look. But yeah, I've just been really liking this. And also what I've been doing is using this in my brows and just taking this through my brows as well. All right, I promise we have one more product to talk about and then we'll get into the fun makeup part. Um, so this is kind of a, a skincare makeup hybrid. So it's the perfect little transition product, but I had to mention my Lila B a Glow Golding Priming Oil. This launched just recently. Um, I think it launched on the 24th. So, um, but I've been using this for a while now and I love this and I just wanted to give you my updated thoughts if you didn't already know, love this product. I have done a video talking about this, so I will definitely link that up here and I'll also link it down below. But yeah, this is fantastic. I love it my thoughts have not changed. All right, so now we're gonna move on to makeup. I feel like I'm gonna have so many products to talk about today, it's kind of crazy. Um, so I will try and link any videos that I've talked about any of these products so I don't have to sit here and bore you to death because there's a lot, there's a lot. So for foundations, I tried out so many new foundations it feels like. Um, I tried out the e.l.f. Flawless Satin Foundation. I honestly have not been wearing this at all since that drugstore video that I talked about this in because I got the wrong shade. If you watch that video, you already know, yeah, I suck at picking shades. I also did an entire wear test with the Pixi Beauty Balm High Coverage Foundation. I actually found, wow, I actually found this product to not be very full coverage, though honestly I have not played with this either because the fragrance is a little off-putting. And because I tried this Makeup Revolution Super Dewy Skin Tint, I much prefer this product over the Pixi one. There's no fragrance in this one, and this one's actually more affordable. This was such an amazing product. I will link the video where I talk about this. I'm actually gonna apply this today. Um, this is so, so good. It's definitely more of a natural finish, um, which is so perfect for me right now, just in the summertime, it's just a lot easier to wear. So yeah, loved this. And then I've also, um, I did a wear test on the new Lawless Conceal the Deal Foundation, which I loved as well, so definitely check out that review. So a lot of these products already have um, dedicated videos, so I'm not gonna harp on these too much, but I am gonna go ahead and apply the Makeup Revolution Super Dewy Skin Tint. Let me zoom y'all in so you can see. I know this is not the greatest lighting, um, but I think it'll work. I think regardless of what kind of skin type you have, I think you'll enjoy it. It's just that perfect in-between product where if you have oily skin, you'll like it. And if you have a drier skin type, you'll like it. All right, so I have quite a few concealers to talk about as well. So I have the Juvia's Place I Am Magic Concealer, which I purchased the wrong shade. So I have not really played with this too much, but from what I could tell when I tried this out, I actually really did like this. It was a nice, 
like it wasn't overly matte the coverage was great and i like the way that it blended out on my skin i also tried the makeup revolution conceal and define concealer which i like this one as well i feel like i got a shade that was too light for me i just can't figure it out i can't figure out my shades so yeah both enjoyed i enjoyed both of these but i definitely need to get my right shades to fully like try them out and then the Kai Padami concealer, I think that's just what it's called. Oh, Natural Radiant Concealer. Really, really enjoyed this. This is another great drugstore uh, concealer, and I really want to try more from this brand. Y'all know I love their contour palette. Um, so yeah, three really great more full coverage concealers. Um, I just need to get my, my shades. And then I also have been further trying out the Nude Sticks Nude Fix Concealer. I think I've already talked about these in a monthly makeup kit video, but I just wanted to mention them again because I have been using them all month. I love this concealer. If you're looking for a full coverage, more matte finish concealer that's not heavy or drying or cakey or anything like that, this is a fantastic concealer. So yeah, this has been great, especially in the warmer weather. And then another concealer that I've really been trying to test out is the Chantecaille Le Camouflage Stylo. I purchased this, I want to say a month and a half ago, um, and I tried it and wasn't wowed by it, so I just, it kind of sat in my drawer and I just haven't been using it. Well, I have been making a point to use it over the past couple weeks, and I really, really like this. So I'm going to use this today, um, and the way that I actually like using it is uh, applying it to wherever I need it. I don't like the applicator, I will say that. But I did buy it full well knowing that it had this kind of applicator. I just don't love this applicator. I feel like I have to keep clicking it and just doesn't, it's just kind of more obnoxious than anything. But the way that I like to use this concealer is to actually let it sit on my skin for a second. And I feel like I get a lot more coverage and I feel like it looks better that way. The first time, the first couple times I used this, I just blended it out immediately. And I just felt like it did nothing. It's like, what's the point of using a concealer if it's not really gonna do anything? But if you let it sit on your skin, it's beautiful. So I'm gonna let this kind of sit and chill. There are actually quite a few cream bronzers that I tried out this month. Um, one of them being the Vapor Bronzing Stick. This is their new, shade i don't think they have their their old shade anymore i think this is the only shade that they have it's in the shade simmer i talked about this in a full face of new makeup not a fan of their cream products that come in the sticks i feel like they're too dry they're really hard to blend out and i just personally don't like this shade it's way too light and it's shimmery which i just don't love in a kind of contour stick type of packaging so this did not work out for me However, two that really, really worked out for me are is the Jouer Bloom Bronze and Glow Bronzer and Highlighter Duo and the Persona Bronzing Stick. Both of these are incredible. With the Jouer one, you get a cream bronzer contour on one side. It is matte. And then you get a shimmery highlighter on the other side. Both of them are creams. And then the Persona one is just a bronzing stick. So yeah, I've thoroughly enjoyed both of these. So I'm gonna take the shade Dune from Persona and I'm gonna use this for my cream bronzer. Uh, this shade is very warm, I will say that. So it's not the best like contour shade in my opinion, um, but the formula is just so good. It reminds me a lot of my Danessa Myricks Balm Contour. Blends out like a dream. I'm just blending it out with the Lawless Foundation Brush. So I didn't try any new powders that I can think of off the top of my head. I've just been using my favorite Danessa Myricks Evolution Powder and the Bare Minerals Original Mineral Veil Pressed. So I'm just gonna set my face down with Danessa Myricks. All right, so a bronzer that I tried out this month. This is actually very, very new to me. This is the Flower Beauty Heat Wave Luminous Bronzer in the shade Sunswept. I talked about this in my previous video or the video before that um, where I was trying out a bunch of new stuff. But yeah, I picked this up at my local grocery store. Love this. It's a great dupe for the Kosas Baked Bronzer in the shade Light. It really just gives the skin a little bit of a sheen. This is a very warm bronzer um so just keep that in mind but yeah it's 
so so nice and reminds me so much of the Kosas bronzer which is one of my holy grail bronzers and then I also tried out two new blushes uh, one of them is the rare melting blush and this shade in particular is my favorite this is nearly neutral this was such a nice find I am not a cream blush wearer there are a couple formulas that I really love, but I don't deviate outside of those just because I've not had the greatest luck with cream blush. But this is such a great formula. It's a cream to powder formula. It's not too overbearing where you're like stress blending it out. Um, just such a beautiful, beautiful blush. So I'm actually going to apply a little bit of this today. Really cool texture and formula melts on contact. And yeah, I was actually really, really impressed by this formula. Um, their other blush formula that comes with the doe foot applicator was just a little bit more work to blend out, a little bit more difficult. This, I feel like anyone can use this. It's so beginner friendly. And if you have a more oily skin type or you don't like the look or feeling of creams on the face, I think you'll really, really like this. And then I also tried out the Burt's Bees Blush in Toasted Cinnamon. Again, this is a very, very new product to me. I have not been trying this out a lot, but I love this formula. The Burt's Bees Blush formula is fantastic. Bare Peach is my favorite shade, um, but I picked up Toasted Cinnamon while I was at the drugstore just to try another shade. And I still like Bare Peach better. This shade's nice, but I just feel like it's so similar to a lot of my bronzers. I feel like it's just not necessary. I could do kind of the same look on the cheek with a bronzer. Honestly, this Flower Beauty bronzer looks very similar to this blush shade, but it's a really pretty formula if you're looking for a great drugstore blush formula. This is nice. And one final step for the base, I have this Lawless Glam Guard Longwear Setting Spray. I just feel like when I wear this, I don't notice a difference in my makeup. I don't I don't really notice enough to be like, yeah, I need to incorporate this into my routine. It's a nice spray. The mist is really nice, which I mentioned in my review. Um, but I just feel like because my foundations that I wear and my concealers and powders, all the other makeup products that I use are so long wearing and I can rely on those. I just don't feel like I need this step. All right, so surprisingly enough, I actually had quite a few eye products that I use this month. Um, got my little bin right here and quite a few eyeshadow palettes, which I don't really reach for, but I feel like there were just a lot of new launches, and so I was able to test out quite a few eyeshadow palettes. So one of those is the Sigma and Beauty Bird collab. This is the Dream Palette. I love the Sigma eyeshadow formula. It is so good. Their Corderosa palette and their Ambiance palette are beautiful. I've talked about those in previous videos, um, but this was the newest launch, and this is gorgeous. It's not one that I reach for, just because I don't reach for eyeshadow palettes regularly and I just feel like this color story is just not as appealing to me as their other two eyeshadow palettes but the formula of this is incredible so if you are a fan of Beauty Bird and you've been wanting to try Sigma this is a really great collab um, it's nice because you have neutrals but you also have pops of color um, I also tried out the Bare Minerals Mineralist eyeshadow palettes there were I think six different versions of this um, I did use these in a video and I think it's really cool that they're refillable you can throw away this packaging um, there's no mirrors and I like that aspect of it I just think the formula for the price it's nothing new and innovative and nothing that I don't know I would just much rather reach for like an Aether eyeshadow palette or even one from the drugstore, like the Kai Para Mi eyeshadow palette that I talked about in one of my drugstore videos. I feel like those formulas are actually a lot better. And um, yeah, for the price, these are actually quite pricey. I think they're like $40, around $40, maybe a little bit less. I just don't think it's 100% worth it. I also played with the new Urban Decay Naked 3 mini palette, which I love the Naked 3 palette. It's actually my favorite naked palette out of all of them um, I still have mine it's my favorite so I think it's cool that they came out with the mini I didn't love this palette because I feel like a lot of these shades are very very similar and I don't know I just felt like I you can't get a ton of looks out of this so I would honestly just go for the naked three I know this is a more affordable option but I just feel like you can only do so much with this I also tried the new Aether 
Rose Quartz Crystal Palette. I did an entire comparison video of this new palette versus the original palette, which is one of my favorite eyeshadow palettes of all time. So when they came out with this new one, I was a little salty because I love their original, and I feel like every time I start to like an eyeshadow palette, it gets discontinued. But if you watch that review, then you'll know that this formula is really good. It is very different than the original. So definitely check out that video. I love this palette. Um, I think she definitely did a really great job with the formulas in this palette. Um, but definitely check out that video so you can kind of see swatches, get the full meal deal on what I think about it. But I'm going to go and apply this today. So I also have been trying out these Alme Velvet Foil Cream Shadows. I love these. I mentioned in whatever video I was talking about these. I cannot remember the exact video. But this is very similar to Danessa Myrick's Color Fix in the shade Celebration which is my favorite color fix shade. The formula is not 100%. Um, I wouldn't call this a dupe, but it's a great drugstore alternative if you don't want to spend the $18 on color fix. Um, I also tried a Burt's Bees cream eyeshadow. I actually wasn't a huge fan of this. It was too sheer, um, really didn't show up on the eyes, and I just felt like it was just not, it, it didn't do anything on my eyes, didn't do enough for me to warrant using it so yeah just not a huge fan of that formula maybe other shades are more pigmented i just felt like that shade was very sheer and didn't really show up and then i also tried out the new bare minerals mineralist eyeliners love the formula of these i love the shade range that they came out with the method of application i did not like because these break like crazy they come out of the packaging really easily and they're just very, very fragile and hard to work with. The formula is amazing. They're super creamy, very long wearing, don't pull or tug at the eyes. So I just wish they were either in pencil form or if they could just like make the packaging a little bit better so that the product wasn't shooting out of the packaging. Great formula, just didn't love the packaging. And then I have a couple brow products that I tried this month. Um, the first is this NYX lift and snatch brow tint pen love this the hype is real on this product and then i tried two new brow gels i tried the fit glow um plant protein brow gel wasn't a huge fan of this i feel like it's so similar to the color pop brow boss gel um but honestly i like the color pop one better this just didn't have any hold and i felt like it just dispensed too much product in my brows and it was just kind of chunky a brow gel that I did enjoy, however, is the Persona Swipe Up Brow Gel. This is really good. This is a brow gel that has hold. It gives you a nice tint. I'm not a fan of uh, tinted brow gels, and this is actually one that I really like. So if you've been wanting to try a new tinted brow gel, this is definitely the one to go for, and it's a lot more affordable than the Fit Glow one. But from day to day, I typically just stick with my hair gel, got to be glued gel, soap, that is everything for the eyes. I'm actually gonna take a little bit of my hair gel since we're here, because I haven't applied any hair gel to my brows yet. I've only filled them in. And I'm gonna take this Kiss brush. So I actually tried out a bunch of mascaras this month. I feel like every brand has been coming out with a new mascara, and I've also been trying some drugstore mascaras. So the two drugstore mascaras that I tried are the Essence Lash Princess False Lash Effect Mascara. This was not my favorite upon first impressions. I have tried it out since then, and I just feel like I need to let it dry out some more, and I think I will like it a little bit more. I just felt like it didn't do enough for my lashes. Um, I also tried the CoverGirl... Lash Blast Clean Waterproof Mascara. This is an amazing mascara. However, it does not come off. It is brutal to take off at the end of the day. Three other mascaras. The Hint Flirt Mascara. Didn't have a lot of luck with this either. It just wasn't my favorite. Again, I'll let it kind of dry out sometimes mascaras and you just let them dry out a little bit um, for them to kind of work a little bit better. But yeah, it just... I felt like it just didn't do enough. It was very, very natural, and I love a good, thick lash. Um, two other mascaras that I loved. Um, I don't know if I talked about the... I don't know if I talked about this one in my monthly makeup kit last month. I don't think it had launched yet. Um, but this is the new Beauty Counter Think Big, Think Better mascara. Fantastic. Great for those of you who like length and separation. 
If you like the Ilia Limitless Lash Mascara, um, then I think you'll really like this one. It's that kind of rubbery plastic wand. It's not a traditional bristle wand, but it's just great for length and separation. You can build it up. And this was a fantastic mascara. So I've been using this all month just for when I need, just for when I want length and separation. If I want more volume, I've been using my Ilia Fullest Volumizing Mascara. This is great if you like a very fluffy volume. This is not Lawless One and Done volume. That one is a very thick, chunky, almost a little bit of like a clumpy spider lash, which I love. It's not for everybody. I think this one is for those of you who maybe think the Lawless one is too chunky or too thick, or for those of you who don't like that super chunky lash, I think you would really like this one. All right, so for lips, I had a lot, there were a lot of lip launches this month too. Bite came out with their Power Move Soft Matte Lipsticks. Love this formula, it's super comfortable. It reminds me of the Milk Matte lipstick formula if you've ever tried that it's very similar to that yeah, these are a great launch i was very excited about those um, especially this shade hot tomato such a great bright red shade which i love red urban decay also launched a ton of new lipsticks and in different finishes so they had their matte finish their cream finish shine i think that was it they just had three finishes um these are great as well um i think i prefer the bite matte formula more but um yeah so these are really nice um i did not like the packaging though while it looks very cool when you're trying to put the uh lipstick back the cap back on the bullet it's kind of hard to finagle so that's just first world problems me being very nitpicky um but formula of these is really nice i like that they had three different formulas so if you like something shiny or more matte um, but yeah, these were great as well. I definitely prefer the bite ones more. And then there were so many glosses. So we had the rare glosses. Urban Decay came out with glosses with their lipstick launch. Uh, Kosas came out with new lip oils. Bare Minerals came out with their mineralist lip gloss balms. And then I also purchased a lip gloss from Makeup Revolution, their Hydra Balm lip gloss. This is fantastic i wear this every single day and i mentioned this in my last video but it's a really great alternative to the lila b lovingly lip treatment oil uh, really great formula i kind of want to try some more colors urban decay glosses were okay like i'm not a huge fan of tinted glosses these also had a plumping effect to them um so they did tingle a little bit but it was nothing like painful or anything um, yeah, not my favorite formula, and I just feel like there's so many great drugstore glosses. You don't need to spend the money on that. Um, Rare Beauty. This is where it's at. These glosses are fantastic. If you're going to spend money on glosses, this is where your money needs to go. These are their balms. I don't know if they're just called balms or balm glosses. Oh my gosh, these are fantastic. I talked about these in my first impressions video using these so good a great kind of gel type formula it's very comfortable on the lips not too sticky but very glossy and the colors are very sheer so while they look quite intense in the packaging it's actually a very sheer formula so i'll apply one of these today my favorite shade is nearly neutral just like with the melting blush uh, which i also love in nearly neutral i love that she came out with this whole monochromatic type of thing where everything has the same shade name very very cool um the kosas lip oils i just think for the price and the amount of product that you get i would much prefer going for the rare glosses or the makeup revolution gloss these just didn't wow me not a bad formula again just i think just for the price there are other options out there and then i also tried a liquid lip from persona this is her season one liquid lip in the shade og fantastic talked about this in my last video and then i think the video before that really great very comfortable liquid lip i'm not going to apply it today because i have worn it in the past couple videos and then i tried a bunch of new lip pencils so uh, i also tried a lip pencil from persona 
This is her lip liner in the shade Almond. Again, another fantastic lip pencil. And these are only $14, so it's a little on the pricier side for drugstore, but then again, is it? I feel like drugstore is so expensive these days. So really not that expensive, and I love this color, and it matches the OG liquid lip perfectly. And then I tried the LA Girl Precision Lip Pencils. These are $2.99. They are the best lip pencil from the drugstore. If you love MAC lip pencils, you will love these. The shade Cafe is a dupe for MAC Strip Down. I have found it, I found a dupe. This one, dupe for MAC Strip Down. I also love the shade Sugar and Spice, which is more of like a mauve nude. And then the shade Bear is nice if you like a very, very, very natural lip pencil. I'm gonna go ahead and apply Cafe, which is my favorite shade of the bunch. They're creamy, but not overly creamy. And they are, I mean, they're MAC lip pencils. That's the closest thing I can compare them to. For today, I'm gonna use the Rare Gloss Balm. I can't, I don't know the exact name of these, um, but this is in the shade Nearly Neutral. These are so comfortable. I don't even know how to describe the formula. It's like a gel, like a thick moisturizing gel. It almost feels like a lip treatment rather than a lip gloss. But yeah, Balm is definitely the right name for these. All right, guys, that completes this video. My battery is about to die, so I'm gonna cut it off here, but I hope you enjoyed. I hope you found this helpful. If you've just been wondering about my updated thoughts on certain products, I hope that this series is helpful. I will link the playlist to all my previous monthly makeup kit videos down below. I'll also try and link my makeup kit. It's very hard to find. A lot of y'all are finding it though, so I will try and link it below. It's amazing. It just has such a cool look to it and um, it holds a lot of makeup too. So thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Remember, I love you, God loves you, and I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye guys. You are See